Hello everyone, it's Noelle from Noelle's Nook, and you may be wondering, what is on the table? <laughs> well, here I have some not so good quality watercolor pencils. These are from a brand called Colorific. They were gifted to me years and years and years ago when I was a child. I have never used them, as you can kind of tell. They're all still pretty long. But I figured there had to be some way I could get some use out of these. And lo and behold, I figured I could make my own liquid watercolors. Now you guys have actually seen me use these way back on the first day of my 30 Days 30 Ways series. These were used to finish off the horse that day. And I really thought that the pigment came out really well. Of course, these are not artist grade, so I can't, uh, I can't say that they would be um, fade proof or have any sort of light fastness. That would be something I'd have to go and uh, test. But I figure if you're just starting out as an artist, you want to try uh, watercolors and you might have some really cheapo uh, watercolor pencils lying around, this might be the tutorial for you. I also have to note, I'm kind of filming this in um, little snippets. Uh, I don't really have a lot of time lately, so if my clothes change between shots, that's probably why. Just to show you guys what I mean, that these were not the best to work with, I'm going to go ahead and swatch these dry and wet, and then we will get on with the tutorial part. All right, so here's everything all swatched out. And I do have to at least commend Colorific, even though these are probably the hardest watercolor pencil leads I've ever worked with. They were so scratchy on the paper. But anyway, I'm trying to compliment them here. Um, but I noticed that most of these colors when swatched wet were basically, I mean, there's a couple of uh, outliers here, but for the most part, they swatch wet the same as they swatch dry, which in my opinion is awesome because um, especially with Faber-Castell, which is the watercolor pencils that I use the most, a lot of those colors swatch very different um, when you're doing dry or wet. And that can be a problem if you want to work with them wet. But I'm really impressed with these, so at least I'll commend them for that. But I just wanted to show you guys that here's the swatches. They they're just not good. Like these leads are so scratchy. Here, let me let me pull this up really close so you can see what I mean. All right, I don't know if you can see, but I think this one's really prominent right here. It's like it indented in the paper because it's so hard. And it was just, oh, these were awful to work with. White especially is pretty bad. I mean, I swatched white just for the fun of it, but look at that. You don't want that on your paper. You want nice, smooth lay down when you work with watercolor pencils, which I do like from Faber-Castell, but like I said, um, we're not gonna be using these in the, in the cases anymore. We're gonna break them with a hammer. Now, this is just the tool that I'm going to use if you want to use another blunt object for your, as your weapon of choice to get the leads out. That is, by all means, up to you. Obviously, if you're underage, ask for permission to do something like this. This is going to be messy. It is going to be somewhat dangerous because we are using an, a, a pretty heavy object. You might hurt your fingers. That's okay, just be very careful. Another thing to take precaution on is splinters. So what we're gonna do is once we start, you know, chopping away and hacking away at this, this is going to splinter. You have to be careful. This is wood. It does hurt if you use it wrong. <laughs> but essentially what we're getting at is this lead here, this core. Some watercolor pencils and, you know, colored pencils in general, they are held together in this case with an, an adhesive. Okay, so if you see kind of a sticky substance in there, it's just glue. It's not really going to affect our watercolor. It'll be totally fine. One last thing to note is think about the workspace that you are going to be using. This is going to be messy. We are using a blunt object. So you want to work on a surface that is not going to be affected in case you accidentally miss your target. So also, you know, last, last thing the cleanup. 
This is gonna be messy. Make sure you have an appropriate way to clean, whether it be with a broom or you lay down newspaper and just throw that out. So now that all of that is taken care of, I'm gonna show you guys a little bit of footage of me uh, making or, or at least hammering these watercolors out. So please watch that footage before you try this yourself. So at least you kind of get an idea of what we're going for. So what I'm doing is I'm going all the way along the entire length of the pencil on one side, all right, and you can see that the wood is shattering. So just be careful. See, we have a big piece here. It's okay to rip that off, all right. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Hold on, I, I really hope this is real life because that would be so funny. Uh, oh, never mind. Okay, I was, I was mistaken. I thought this entire thing was like completely blank and there was no lead in it. I actually got a color race pencil like that before. All right. So just move it around a little bit as you need. Hold it very firmly in one hand. Work on one side at a time. Just be very careful. These pieces are very sharp. So now we see some lead. So now what you're gonna do at this point is you do wanna take the bottle that you are going to be storing these in and you're gonna start storing the lead in there. So anyway, like I said, you're gonna take these kind of pieces of lead here and you can break them up a little bit and just put them in your jar. Okay, I do highly recommend having the jars that you are going to be storing them in immediately. I used to store the other watercolor that I, I actually had to transport the watercolor that I showed you already in bottles from, uh, they were like little quarter cup, uh, little thingamahoojits, little Ziploc containers, and that didn't work out very well because it was kind of a pain in the butt. So anyway, what we're going to do... Just gonna get this lead out here and uh, I'm actually just gonna do this quickly on my own time and I'll show you how to put the water in and all that fun stuff. I also forgot to mention that it's kind of okay to get wood into the final product. I don't recommend it um, but if you get a sliver or two in your bottle that's fine. It's not gonna affect your watercolor. It'll just kind of affect how it comes out of the dropper because it might clog it. So just be aware that that is something that could potentially happen. See, there's a, some glue. You just kind of have to peel it as best as you can without hurting yourself. Or just break it off. Either or is fine. Okay, so this is what I mean. This little piece of wood here may or may not come off easily for you. If it doesn't, it's not a big deal. Just drop it in with your watercolor anyway. Like I said, it's not going to affect it much. All right, so we have extracted our lead from our pencil. So now I do have to um, note that these are half ounce tincture bottles and I will put the link down below. I got them from Amazon. They were about 50 cents or so a bottle, which is pretty cheap since, you know, you can reuse them and all that stuff. But what I'm gonna do is I'm going to fill this up just halfway. Now the reason I got half ounce bottles is because I wanted these to be pretty concentrated. That way they can be diluted as you need. But I just thought, you know, why not? I mean, if we're gonna make our own watercolors, let's make them how we want. Okay, now this is going to be the hard part. We need to do a lot of waiting, <laughs> okay? These have been sitting around for about two months now. I made them back in January um, because that is actually when I did start the 30 Days 30 Ways series was back in January. Um, I started pre-recording the videos for March, if you didn't know that. But I would say 
I would give a timeline. How about we say overnight, okay? We'll say overnight. Actually, since I'm going to be recording this in snippets anyway, <laughs> I will show you guys what this looks like after about, oh, let's say, here, it's about 1.50 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, okay? I will check with these in about eight or so hours, so about 10 o'clock or so tonight, right? Eight hours, 9.50, yep, okay. Because what we needed to happen is we need this stuff to break down and thicken because we won't get super crazy watercolors if that doesn't happen. If you were to use these right now, they would be really thin. They would be pretty transparent, all right? So you can give them a shake or whatever, but realistically, you're probably, your best bet is probably going to have to uh, wait of several hours. But I will shake it because it's kind of fun. <laughs> all right, so... I'm going to go ahead and do the rest of these. I'm going to put them in bottles because my goal for the end of this video is to color a picture for you guys with them. So I will check back in with you guys later and we'll see what this looks like in a couple of hours. And hopefully we'll have a whole army of liquid watercolors. Okay, one more thing before I go. If, see now, I feel awful because these don't have like labels on them, but if you have labels, by all means, put some cool labels on your bottles. That way you know what colors they are. Make up your own colors if you're not sure what colors they are. Swatch them. Have fun. Okay, I'm gone. <laughs>
This is about 24 hours after use. The water has all dried off of the watercolors and now we are left with this crusty after, I don't even know what you would call this, <laughs> after byproduct possibly, I don't really know. But uh, I'm gonna go and try and put some water on this and see if this is reusable. So if I could make any sort of suggestion, it would be that you could also use these. Um, okay, so here's, here's it separated, all separated out. Of course, if I shake it, it'll start to uh, go back. But um, like I was going to say, if you were to get some sort of a container to kind of make your own um, solid watercolors, I bet you could also do it this way as well. So by crushing up and separating those terrible watercolor pencils from before, um, you could potentially make two different kinds of watercolors, a liquid form that will consistently need <laughs> to be shaken and agitated, or this solid form which works out really well. So. I feel like there's definitely potential there if you end up being gifted or accidentally buy um, some cheap watercolor pencils that don't really work out. So yeah, that's that's pretty great. All right, so it is 12.31 on April 8th, and we are just gonna let these evaporate and hopefully solidify and we'll see if we can get some kind of uh, dry pan watercolors so that'll be an interesting experiment all right everyone so it has been weeks <laughs> since I filled this palette with colors um, with the DIY watercolors that we did um, because I wanted them to dry and they are dry now. Some are cracked and stuff since it's been a while. I've been a little busy, so haven't been able to record, but the thing that I thought was really interesting was that they, um, there was like so much liquid that even though they are filled to the top, now that they are dry, there's like barely anything in them, if you can just see the camera. Also, yeah, they kind of dried into these little pucks. <laughs> And I just think they're so itty bitty and cute. I don't know, but um, I'm not necessarily going to do a full illustration. Don't really have a lot of time today and I'm not feeling the greatest right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do a couple of swatches. So I just have a scrap piece of paper here. And um, these colors on the bottom are just random mixes that I made. Uh, I like custom shades basically. So... I mean, it was interesting because I had to mix them quite a bit. They had a really hard time settling, so I don't know if I would recommend trying to um, mix colors together because, you know, these pigments, they are quite heavy. But, I mean, try it out. We're gonna, we're just gonna take a brush here and just use them like you would a regular palette. So I'm just wetting the brush. And yeah, let's dip into the custom colors first. How about we, let's start with this one. All right. I'll just brush that on here. So they do work just like, you know, a normal palette would. Colors come off pretty, pretty decently. If I were to fill these up more, perhaps that would work out as well. How about we come up here to that puck that I showed you? Moves around. <laughs> I think that's cute though. So yeah, they work quite well. Very, very pigmented. Much, much better than using the colored pencil version for sure. Um, but yeah, so that's that's pretty much it. This entire um, experiment is over now. <laughs> I believe that uh, I have tried out everything I've wanted to try with um, the colored pencils. So I'm just going to close this up here and we're going to uh, end the video. Thank you guys so much for putting up with me during this really long <laughs> experiment. Um, I really did have a lot of fun trying out 
uh, this DIY. I hope you guys learned something from it and maybe try it out yourself if you have some cheap watercolor pencils lying around. So anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. If you like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. And if you want to see more art related videos, I would totally appreciate if you would subscribe. And remember to draw what you love and love what you draw.